following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Field, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Friday! Football is Sunday! <laughs> Welcome to Hanging Barely with the Boys! Home. We had some some yeah. foul language right before we went on the show. the show. Man, <laughs> Nate is still oh, having man. technical difficulties. We think that the Russians might have got a hold of his computer or his software or something. We don't know, but we'll see how this works out. It's good to see you, Nate. I don't know if we can we'll be able to hear you. I don't know how this is going to work. This is going to work. Hey man, speak to glad it. to be back partially, man. Chris Beam, we are, I guess I'm going to take up all his lunchtime, my friend. <laughs> yeah, he'll get a chance to eat on our show today. Man, Kurt's, uh, got, well, Kurt's got the Navy pullover back on, looking good. Jesse got the guns covered up today. It's chilly outside. Man, what a show. It was a little nippy this morning. It was a little nippy this morning. When it's raining, it was a little muggy outside. Got to yeah, put the got, guns away, man. Man, what a had a storm here in the Metroplex over the over the night. A little chilly today. Let's get this. Let's warm it up a little bit. Let's get it going on Friday. What do y'all? What do you guys say? Speaking of let's warming it. it up, let's do it. Get the towel out, Nate. Get the hot towel out. <laughs> out and out and Smith got a bad neck, man. Supposed to play. Probably going to be limited. If that happens, I mean, should they even go? Should they even go to Washington, Nate? I mean, they shouldn't even let this guy play. No, you know, last no. guy we let play with a bad neck, <laughs> he went to surgery and stayed out a whole year. He's gone. But you told us the hot towel would work. <laughs> you told us the hot towel would work. Let me say something. Let me say something. <laughs> that hot towel fixed his neck so good till he re hurt it in the game and didn't even know how bad it was. We better keep the hot towels off these cats' necks, man. If we get this to all the spill. We may lose him to not only this year, but the free agency too. He the only guy that can get a sack. So stay away from hot towels, though. <laughs> uh, how do you how do you how do you compensate oh. if he if he's not able to play or if he is limited? Oh. Well, you got Randy Gregory. They, they're supposed to have Randy Gregory, and uh, he's been off for a couple of years, so that should put him in line to get a couple of sacks. See, like the guys that don't play <laughs> yeah. over a long period of time is apt to get more sacks than the guys that play year in and year out. Figures. J- yep. Jesse just noticed your sweatshirt. You got you got Nate's slogan on your on your chest. Is that is that what your uh, outlook is for Sunday? Hope. No, this is this is Nate's slogan right here. Yeah. This is the whole shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can say what you want about me. <laughs> I'm just glad these suckers didn't get into my bank account. See, my wife was panicking about this computer blowing up. The first place I called was the bank. Look at him. Freeze <laughs> all accounts. I called my checking, my, my credit card folks. Look at him. For the next two weeks, I'll be calling every day. Uh, <laughs> Nate, just ever, so everybody knows, Nate wasn't on the show yesterday because his his computer got hacked. So he was dealing with hacker issues. So that's what he's talking about. He went. His wife was worried about the computer. He's worried about the money. <laughs> yeah, you can have this computer. I'll buy you 10 or 12 of those. <laughs> That's oh, why man. I tell people, listen to me. Go to your banks that you bank at and build a personal relationship with those that hold your money. <laughs> because I got a direct line to the lady who got a direct line to my accounts. And I checked her. She don't know I secretly checked her accounts to make sure the hairs didn't blow up. All of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, Kurt, you got a yeah. you you did some research for the show today, and you went well, and found. Quit. Yeah, before that, I mean, we talking about Alden Smith being out. What about yeah. Zach Martin being out? Zach Martin's out. Well, Zach. we had we missed him the last game, so oh. we can adjust to that. Think we so? can, we, Coach Philbin and all those guys can adjust 
to that because they had over t- two and a half quarters to to figure out how Conor mm-hmm. McGovern, who we drafted in the second or third round two years ago, now we can figure out whether he can play or not. We got to be the only team that can draft dudes in the in the first two rounds and, and wait three years to see if they can play. <laughs> It's going to be it's interesting be. against one of the best defensive lines around. Now, now, let me ask you this question, Nate. Would you do some shuffling of that offensive line? No, for what's example? Example? None. None. Like, you None. wouldn't try to see what, what uh, you know, Connor Williams could do at tackle. He's played tackle at Texas. Can you, you know, slide him out? No? Line him up and go. This thing, we know where the sore spots at, Jesse. We know, like our brothers and sisters, we know right way to punch him, right way to say something, right way to do, <laughs> way to get them going, so we can get them riled up. We know where the sore spots at, so let's leave the sore spots where they at and work on the rest and heal that sore spot. What if they're all sore spots? No, they're not. No, they're not. No, I have not seen nothing ridiculously bad by these other guys. No more than the left guard and in the right tackle. And I think over time they would get better. I, I said it the other day, and I continue to say it. A lot of offensive lines struggle when they're youthful. They're 22 years old. If they was at Ohio State, we'll be we'll be tooting their horn and ready to draft them in the first round. They just happen to be in the NFL, 22 years old and ready to play. Man, Nate, yeah, I should give you this sweatshirt, man. You brought a whole lot of this this morning. <laughs> it ain't about I hope, Jesse. Here, here, I'm gonna give you the sweatshirt. You put that on. Let me see, Jesse, and, and Kurt, and all. What it is is the reality of it. We're not a very good team, and I've taken to the mindset, and I think maybe the maybe uh, subconsciously the Joneses and and the coaches. Hey, man, we're not a very good team. Let's just work the way we at. Go play by play, game by game. And build this thing so next year you'll know exactly where you at, and you'll go out and get the right players to fill the right holes. And, and, and because you can say what you want, you know, I'm no more from me talking great offense, oh super wide receivers. This, this. come on, man, come on. <laughs> right now we are we are not a very good team, and what we have to do is learn how to play smart football in order to win games. Not put the ball on the ground. Not have no pre-snap penalties. Not have any dumb penalties once the play is started. Play smart. Everybody get on the same page, especially defensively in the, in the secondary. Everybody get on the same play and just play. And if you lose, you lose, but everybody on the same page and everybody's playing hard. I see a lot of teams. I, I listen to a lot of announcers. I'm quite sure you guys do too. They say, yeah, not a very good team, but they play hard and they're trying to learn. That's where we're at, fellas. I'm not, I'm not fooling myself no more. I'm not saying that the Cowboys are, can't win this game. But playing dumb, not playing hard, yeah, they will lose the game. Playing smart, playing with intensity, knowing where to be, they have opportunity to win the game. Do you think this game is, I hate to say must win because it's you know only the seventh game or whatever. From yeah. this point on, Every game they play is a must win because somehow, some way, last night Philadelphia inked out a win with a quarterback that we found out is not very athletic. <laughs> I ain't talking about Carson Wentz. I'm talking about you run 80 yeah. yards and can't roll into the end zone. Oh, my the goodness. The <laughs> oh, my goodness. I fe- you know, I felt bad for the guy. I was like, oh, my God, this dude's got wheels. I had no idea Daniel Jones had – no, Daniel, no! <laughs> I felt bad for a grown man. <sighs> I'll put it like this. Whoever saw that gentleman dancing yesterday, that's who should have been running, running for the touchdown. He would have made it. Y'all, saw, y'all somebody saw a guy yesterday that was dancing. This dude was throwing down. <laughs> who saw that? Who saw that? That was me. Oh, okay, Jesse, that was sweet. That was you, from at least right, you know our man Gio. Is that, that our was man, Gio? Yeah, yeah, our man Gio from Jersey. Thanks, Gio. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I yeah, like that, that was moves, good. man. That was after the day I went through, the, the day my wife went. I got to show my wife that, man. At first, I thought it was Kurt. I said, this can't be Kurt. I thought it was, too. I said, it was just like Kurt. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I had, I wish that, I had that guy's that moves. moves. Yeah, man. Speaking, I, you know what? I had him at one time, but they slowly slips away as age sticks on. <laughs> Hey, you know, I wonder, you know, that's a good point. Talk about fans sending us stuff in. That's that's one thing I think that has always set our show apart from the other shows is 
We do this show for the fans. We like to hear from the fans. We like to have the fans on the show. Unlike the other shows that you hear on DallasCowboys.com, <laughs> there's only there's only 25% of this crew that likes to hear themselves talk. All the other shows, <laughs> all the other shows, everybody on their crew likes to hear themselves talk. We like to hear the fans talk. 75% of us like to hear the fans talk. I'll let you determine who the 25% is that likes to hear himself talk. But you got an Chris H and an E on his shirt. <laughs> Chris, if we were to get fans to send in video Twitter questions, could you put those on the show where we could see them and hear them and then us answer those next week? Yeah, we'll work on that. Yeah. Chris must be eating lunch. Okay, we'll figure that out. But I think that's you know what's more I, disappointing. He got a thumbs up. You know what's more. You know what's more disappointing about. Put on the shirt, hope, and, and, and man, I, I'm eternal with that when it comes to the Cowboys. But it, I, I'm looking at a team. I'm looking at two teams last night that is truly in our category bad. Yeah. 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 But still, why do their games look better than our games? Maybe because I'm so critical, you know, or maybe because our defense play good for three possessions and then our offense reward them with back-to-back turnovers. Hey, man, y'all did y'all job for three, for three possessions. Hey, take this fumble. Oh, no, no, you didn't do good. Take this other fumble. That, that don't, that don't kind of irk you a little bit? That don't kind of bother you a little bit, Jess? <laughs> No, it, it does, but I do think we're a little bit more attached to this team than we are to those teams. We watch those teams from a distance until it's time for us to play them. Then we kind of dig a little bit more deeper into them. Um, but <laughs> we, do, we, we dig a little more deep in. Okay. Mm-hmm. There you there go. You go. <laughs> so, when, it, when it becomes Friday, Nate, this freaky Nate comes out weekend, on Friday. Weekend Nate. Weekend Nate comes out. <laughs> Nate lets his hair down on Friday. On Friday. But we, but we do. We, we, we dive uh, and we delve in deeper. I got to use different words. I got to use better, better words for you. For you. Uh, <laughs> uh, when we have to play them. But no, listen, it, it, across the board, it's, it's a bad division. And they get, that game looked bad last night. Like I watched a large majority of that game and there was some bad play on both sides. And so... You know, there were a few plays that were made here and there that helped them win the game, but the Giants couldn't close out. The Eagles were playing trash offensively all game long, and then they made a few plays at the end to, uh, to pull it in. But Eagles, football team in Washington, the New York Giants, the Dallas Cowboys, bad, 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 bad. Now, how we want to how we want to mix the bad up, you know, good, you know, OK, bad, very bad, trashy, bad. You know, however you want to say the bad, you know, Billy Jean bad, however you want to put it down, they are bad. <laughs> there are four bad football teams in this division. So I'm, I'm to the point now where if they don't win Sunday, if they lose to this horrible Washington team, and maybe even if they don't win uh, against the Eagles the following week, I mean, I think it's time. It, it changes the whole direction of the season. It's now time to change the culture now. You're not waiting until the offseason. Trade di- deadline's coming up. You start getting McCarthy's – you start making changes now. You play young guys. You sell off who you can sell off. You bring in draft picks. You get ready for next year and change the culture now. Vikings ain't waiting. The Vikings, they ain't waiting. You, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. If you want to show your fan base who you are and what you're about, you know, I ain't about no uh, tanking and stuff like that. Nah, but I'm about it, – it, it comes a point after 24 years – that you that you have to sit down with upper management as a head coach and say, fellas, I've been here for six weeks. I've been here for seven weeks. Not only can not only do we don't have the guys that don't fit what we're trying to do as far as at, at a defensive point of view, we got guys cr- crying and griping. Nah, nah, nah. That that ain't cool, man. And. and my hat's off to Mike McCarthy because other coaches would have went off. This dude handled it so sweet. I mean, it's a teaching tool. Well, you know, we've been teaching for like 10 years. We teach with Jason. Now we're teaching with this dude. I mean, sometimes, I hate to use this word because it's not a great, we weren't raised on this, we're not a communist country, but a dictatorship in certain situations helps. 
you know, and, and I think he should start telling folks, this is how it is. If you don't like it, go over there to Jerry and tell him so we can get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I agree. We got the break. Uh, I got Absolutely. a story, man. Y'all Absolutely. probably heard me tell this before. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, because yeah. I, I got eternal hope, Jesse. I really do. And I like how, you, you know, you're making your chest bounce up and down and you probably don't even know you're doing it. I didn't, I didn't know I was doing it. I didn't know. Why are you yes. so focused on my so chest? Yes, man. Well, I'm just saying, I hope. He's eternal. Uh, <laughs> Jesse, I, 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 you, I, you I, been, pray for, you I pray been. for Kurt. That's why he's here on this show today. I pray for Kurt. <laughs> All right. Jesse, you've been, <laughs> you been, you been quiet. You've been quiet. Jesse's well, been quiet since this first segment. I hope he doesn't think I was taking shots. No, I'm, no, I'm, 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 letting, I'm letting the fans find out who likes to hear themselves talk for 25% of the time. Okay? We're, we're seeing who likes to talk for 25% of the time. <laughs> he has a star on his chest. He gives me one segment. Let's take it. Ain't gonna be about the locker room. It ain't gonna be about the, the, the chaining of the locker room at Valley Ranch, is it? Let's, <laughs> let's take our first break. We come back. <laughs> Kurt did some research and we'll have story time with Nate on hanging with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. OtterBox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. OtterBox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And OtterBox elevation tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their elevation tumblers at otterbox.com. It's football season, and when you're tailgating with your friends and your family, you want the best meat on your grill. Pettigene Meats makes the best hot dogs, the Pettigene Griller, or the All Beef Franks will score. To complete that tailgate meal, Pettigene Meats has hickory smoked sausage, hot links, Polish sausage, and the best hickory smoked bacon and ham around. Available at your local retailer. And a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Pettigene Meat. Taste the difference. We can't wait to see the Cowboys back on the field, and we can't wait to pack AT&T Stadium to watch them play. When that time comes, SeatGeek is the place to get all of your tickets. Plus, tickets to the hundreds of games, concerts, rodeos, and other live events we'll all be able to enjoy again soon. Every SeatGeek purchase is protected by a buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. Sea Geek, let's go. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly, just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, Book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to Hanging with the Boys. We are back. Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, Nate Newton, Shannon Gross, Hanging with the Boys from the SWBC Mortgage Living Room in Frisco. Kurt's favorite phrase, nestle the boys and Tommy John, the softest, most supportive underwear out there. Stay put, waistbands, adapt for the perfect fit, while 360-degree stretch prevents ride up and supports any move you make. And now they even have loungewear. Yeah, loungewear. Shop underwear at tommyjohn.com forward slash cowboys for 15% off your first order. tommyjohn.com forward slash cowboys. That is so hard to he- to talk. When all I can hear is myself talking back at me with a live read like that. Thank you, Chris. I know nobody at home can hear that, but that's driving me insane. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I feel for you because that's awful. All right, story time with Nate. We're having a, a little technical difficulty with Nate, so Chris is having to mute his mic when he's not talking. So Nate said he's going to tell a story, and then he's just going to sit there for the rest of the show because he's already made his money. So, Nate? It's your floor. Okay. It's ahead, your floor. Nate. Go ahead, Nate. You know, Kurt said earlier in the first segment that, you know, maybe if we don't win this game or maybe if we win this game and lose the Eagles game that we should start start trying to change the locker room and the dynamics of what we think these players should be doing. I remember when Coach Johnson got to the team and about seven, eight games in, a lot of the veteran guys, Started talking, hey man, this coach don't know what he's talking about. He come from the University of Miami. He might have won a national championship, but it's done different here with grown men. It's out. And so it leaked up to Coach Johnson. You know, not so much the media was getting involved because at that time they was weary of Coach Johnson because he was shutting off a lot of the media guys as well as a lot of the players. And he came in one time, man, and he told that, you know, he was kind of abrupt, like, hey, everybody get a seat. And people was kind of milling around, and he cussed, like, hey, everybody get you in the seats. And everybody kind of looked, you know, because some of these guys was the same age as Coach Johnson. They kind of looked at him, like, hey, you, you know, because, you know, Coach Landry wasn't a cussing dude. So he said, let me tell y'all something. He said, I came here, and, I, and, I, and I've been evaluating, and I looked at you guys, and I'm thinking, hey, these are the pros. Guys going to study film. Guys going to do what it takes to win. Guys going to be motivated about doing the right things. He said, you know what? It's no different than college. Half of y'all don't study film. I've been sitting around here watching, and most of y'all, you, 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 you being and moaning. He said, I tell you what. He said, I'm a, I only came here for one reason. That's to win football games. He said, you know what? All the griping and all that, he said, that's fine. He said, but I'm going to leave out of this office. I'm going to leave out of this meeting room about five or ten minutes after, after this meeting. And I want any MML who thinks he want to leave here or who thinks he need to leave here, meet me in my office in 35 minutes, and I will take anything to get you out of here. <laughs> I mean, he went off. And all of a sudden, I said, wow. You know, I'm young back then. I'm like, wow. So I'm saying in my mind, I'm going around to his office. And I'm going to sit right outside his office and talk to his secretary. Because I want to see in the next 35 minutes who's going to show up at his office. So I'm sitting right there looking. I'm talking to his secretary. She's like, Nate, you, Nate you, I know you used to come and visit, but you don't stay this long. I said, yes, ma'am. I'm trying to see something. Yeah. She said, what are you trying to see? I said, nah, they don't pay attention to me. How your son? We talking about my son. She knew my son's personally. And... About 45 minutes, Coach Johnson come walking up, you know, from a job. I mean, he come walking up from his job. And he looked at me, smiling, Nick, what you doing around here in my office, boy? I said, well, Coach, to be honest with you, I was waiting to see what other guys was going to show up because to see who was going to be out there. He just bust out laughing. He said, you see the office empty, and I think we got, we got enough of those uh, guys out of our locker room now. Bruh. The story, the moral to the story is you can you can moan, you can groan, you can talk all the noise you want, but if this man fronts you up, you ain't gonna be that same guy, and you ain't going to his office, and you better get ready to play some football. And we played football better from that point on. We didn't win many games, but we played better from that point on because they found out it's either me, my salary, my family, or playing ball for this man, and they decided it was better to play ball for the man. That college man that didn't know nothing. End of my story. I know Coach McCarthy ain't gonna do that, but I'm just saying what Jimmy did. Mm, probably no. needs to do that, doesn't he? I mean, it's it's time. And if he's gonna change the culture, why wait until the off season when he can make a few moves? Why not start now? I think the biggest thing, what's changing the culture and getting guys in and out, as as weird as it's getting ready to sound, like, the division is still up for grabs. And I think that's the one thing that there, a lot of teams are still holding on to is that, you know, that there's hope that things get better, right? People begin to buy in or latch on or th their, their dumb brain shuts off and their smart brain turns on and they're able to find some sort of something in between now and the end of the year or to the to either now or to when the 
Or you've been mathematically eliminated from winning the division and making the playoffs. And that, that, that's the sucky part about this division and about what we have to face each and every week, you know, with, with the four teams in this division. Because there is this false hope that, hey guys, if we just win five or six games, we might be able to win this division. And you, you always want to try to at least get into the playoffs because then anything can happen. We, you may not have the odds to win and you may not actually win the game, but getting there gives you a chance for any craziness to happen, right? For any, you, you, you all of a sudden, it clicks it, or you, you catch your stride or whatever it may be. So that, that's the thing I think that this team is still looking at is saying, bro, we're we not out of this. As bad as we've played, as bad as things have looked, as, you know, maybe we can get some guys back, you know, things go, to, go in our favor. And we come out of this thing, even if it's six or seven wins that, to take to win this division, and we win this division, and we find ourselves in the playoffs, then that's a whole new horse uh, that's a whole new horse of a different color if you actually get into the playoffs. I think until this team is to a point where you're no longer mathematically uh, in the running of making the playoffs, then you're going to keep trying to figure things out before you clean house and, and, and clean bad culture and clean bad residue out and get things going in the, in the next direction. Because hope is still on the horizon when you look at this team and this division with making the playoffs. But you don't think, you know, you lose against Washington, a horrible Washington team. And then again, if you lose against the Eagles the next week, at that point, I mean, to me, that's, it's time. I think, I think if you lose those two games back to back, then yes, because it's probably over for you by then. Because you're probably going to lose to Pittsburgh and you're probably going to end up losing to, to, the, to the Baltimore Ravens. So then it'll be, um, it'll be over for you. What do you think, Nate? Well, I, I just think that what's on your shirt, man, I, I, you sounded so great. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thanks for contributing. Kurt. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we didn't think, interrupt th- that. Think about, think about, to Jesse's point, the year that the Giants won the Super Bowl, they had to win six games in a row at the end of the year just to claw back in the wild card. Like everybody, everybody in football had them counted out and was like, "There's no way they're done. They're dead." They had them. They, I, I think I remember two or three different points in that season where people were like, "Yeah, there's no chance. The Giants are out. They're they're not mathematically eliminated, but they're out of it." And then they win six games at the end of the year to get into the wild card, and then they go on that run and and they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So. Nobody talks about how bad of a football team you were during the season. On, on Shannon, on top of that, they had about 20 guys that went on and off the IR that same mm-hmm. season. So yep. they had a bunch of injuries happen to them that same season. I hope you're so, right. So, yeah, I mean. But you, I, don't, you, I don't know. You, they, but this, Kurt, this, I mean, it, like Jesse said earlier, it's probably because we're so close to it and we see it day in and day out that this is a bad football team but you know we, we had dat win on the show wednesday night with me and nate and he said it only sometimes it only takes one game for things just to click and guys to go ah okay that's that's what that that's what this means that's how this works and you can go on a run so i, I i'm on the fence with that kurt i'm I, i'm almost to the point where yeah you after this week you clean house but i'm also to the point where hey if you're mathematically not eliminated if you get in the dance you're in the dance, and if you win a championship, nobody's going to care how bad this team was at the beginning of the year. They're just going to remember that you won the first Super Bowl here in 20-plus years. So, yes, Nate. Nate. Who is that guy? Because each one of these teams that y'all named had one or two guys that was going to make that game a game – going to make game-changing plays. You talking about that Giants Zeke. team – they turned Zeke. it around with Zeke. their defense. You talking about that Philadelphia team? They turned it around with their defense. You know, I'm saying who who is that section? Who is that guy? You know that you can put on your on your, on your back, man. Jason Pierre-Paul played big down that stretch. It's another guy who uh, played the other demons in. They played big down that stretch. I remember they came into the here with the Dallas and they did in the second half. They punished us. So I'm saying who? You know, we we keep saying. We, we can forget about it, but who is that guy? Who is that coach? I mean, even the coach of the Giants at that time 
put his foot down and guys stop falling in line, who is that guy that's going to that's gonna turn that one or two games around for us? Well, it's going to be Zeke on offense because he's going to figure out how to quit fumbling, and then Sean Lee's going to come back, and these guys are going to remember. Oh, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. That's what's going to happen. I'm out. You know what? You know what? I, 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 I said, okay, he said Zeke. All right, cool. Let's ride with that. But then you went to Sean. Let's go to break. Let's go to break. Okay. Yeah, we'll go to break. We'll, we'll go to break. All right, fine. We'll go to break. We'll be right back. Hanging with the boys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. OtterBox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. OtterBox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And OtterBox elevation tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their elevation tumblers at otterbox.com. It's football season, and when you're tailgating with your friends and your family, you want the best meat on your grill. Pettigene Meats makes the best hot dogs, the Pettigene Griller, or the All Beef Franks will score. To complete that tailgate meal, Pettigene Meats has hickory smoked sausage, hot links, Polish sausage, and the best hickory smoked bacon and ham around. Available at your local retailer. And a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Pettigene Meats. Taste the difference. We can't wait to see the Cowboys back on the field, and we can't wait to pack AT&T Stadium to watch them play. When that time comes, SeatGeek is the place to get all of your tickets. Plus, tickets to the hundreds of games, concerts, rodeos, and other live events we'll all be able to enjoy again soon. Every SeatGeek purchase is protected by a buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. SeatGeek. Let's go. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Is your family a Cowboys family? Have you taken holiday photos at the Star? Was your wedding theme blue and silver? Have you convinced your kids them is spelled with a D? If so, every game day feels like a vacation to you, so treat it like one. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Hey, Cowboys fans, what better way to spend Thanksgiving than in a private suite at AT AT&T Stadium with your family to watch the best game of the year? Head to DallasCowboys.com forward slash hotels for a chance to win a private suite, a free night's hotel stay, and transportation to and from the game on a Cowboys private bus, all courtesy of Hotels.com. All right. That's one way to go to break whenever you beat your entire <laughs> program down yeah. with an idea so bad they just tell you to go to break. Usually I have to fight you guys to go to break, and y'all were begging <laughs> me to go to break last segment. All right, Kurt, you did some yeah. research. You went and looked at some, some Washington bloggers and some predictions they have. Run down the list, and let's see if we agree or disagree with all of their points. Well, as, as we've talked about, you know, the Giants were the pharmacy. They were going to bring good medicine, and, and Washington's going to bring us good medicine. They're, they're pretty much saying the same thing about the Cowboys. So it, it, here are some points they're making of how they can win. Um, one, they say uh, wide receiver Ter- Terry McLaren should expect to have a big day because his secondary is so bad they won't be able to contain him. Agree or disagree with that? Nate, you go. With- no one receiver should beat us. No one receiver should. I, I don't care how bad our secondary is. No one should, receiver should beat us. Everybody that's came in here has had multiple receivers, so we couldn't lock down on them. Okay, you got one receiver. Come on, one receiver going to beat us. N- nah, it, that shouldn't happen. I disagree. Please don't let that happen. 
And, and, uh, the, and Washington's, the Washington's, uh, uh, Washington's running game is improving. They've got a couple backs now they're using. And they will have success if their offensive line can get some push, and especially since our defensive line up the middle has been weak. I agree. And there's, there's evidence upon evidence upon evidence upon evidence. Pop in the tape, press play, sit back and watch. We have not been able to stop a running game all year long. So I don't even think when I look at this, you know, this offensive line, which is not a good offensive line. I, we just haven't we haven't stopped anyone defensively, especially when it comes down to the running game. Teams have been able just to run up and down the field on this, however they want it, when they want it, where they want it. And we got 300. We had 300 pound dudes, 300 plus pound dudes getting pushed off the ball five yards. <laughs> you, you know, how, like if you ever pushed a sled, just not even a human being, a sled is hard to push five yards of 300 pound weight on there. And they're pushing another body who has the, the, the ability to move and, and actually move you and go around you. Nope. I just 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 push me back the opposite way into my <laughs> linebackers lap. So I, I agree. I hope they give Justin Hamilton some more time in the middle there. He, was, he seemed like the best defensive tackle last game. Uh, let's see, other side of the ball then. Uh, um, they're expecting big days from defensive ends Chase Young and Montez Sweat. Says our O-line is banged up and can't handle them. Nate? I, Nate? Uh-oh, did we lose Nate? Uh, Nate? Uh, Nate? 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 Uh, uh, they got five. And they and could, they be, could right. be right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I, That's all I can say about that. that. Were you going to say something, Shannon? I was just going to say, yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. If, yeah. if, if, they yeah. Don't, if they don't put a game plan in place where Andy Dalton gets the ball out in a three-step drop and gets it out quick, I think they're, you might see Ben DiNucci this game because Andy Dalton may not be able to get himself up off the turf because these, <laughs> these guys are monsters, man. I've watched a few of their games this year, and these guys these guys don't take plays off. These guys are beasts. Yeah. And this, because of this, this, this Eagles front, I mean, this Washington's front sacked the Eagles quarterback eight times. Eight. And he's a mobile in, quarterback. In one football game. He's a mobile quarterback. In one football game. <laughs> eight. <laughs> And just like we saw last week, go look at their stats. It's a bunch of guys. He has two and a half sacks. He has two sacks. He has a sack. He has three sacks. It's a bunch of guys. They got about 17 or 18 total sacks. It's a bunch of guys, two here, two there, two and a half there, two and a half there, one, one. Active. Active. They keep fresh guys in the rotation. They bring guys in. And then, God forbid, God forbid we spend a lot of time in third and long with those definite passing situations. And there's one there's one guy gonna, that we're gonna be doing this. There's there's one guy <laughs> we haven't from their mouth. We haven't really talked about a lot on the show this week because he's play he's coming off the bench, but he always he he's just like you know, Washington has always had those cowboy killers. Santana Moss was one. Ryan uh, um Kerrigan, he shows up every time he plays the Cowboys, and he makes he usually makes a game changing play. So remember that name. He always gets up for the Cowboys. Mm. Yeah, they, that another reason uh, they're given for a possible Washington win is because of the pressure. They say that Kyle Allen neither will, neither quarterback is going to be great, but Kyle Allen will be better. One because he's going to have more time. Re really, the main reason he's going to have more time. He's just a, he's almost kind of a younger version of, of Dalton. He's not going to be flashy, but he's going to be accurate. He'll have the time. Dalton won't. So, I take that to mean that's a yes. Everybody agrees on that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this. Is, is, you, you know, you know, I started, I started to show, to show out, out as, as, you know, you know, it's the same. It's the we we're not we're not viewing our team, team as a winning, as a winning team, team anymore. We, we, we doing we're doing we, we're viewing we're viewing like, like how can, can we win uh, if you play if first? You play first. Like, and and, and that's something I look at now. We have to play first. 
No turnovers. No turnovers. Pray for, Pray a, turnover. for a turnover. No, no, no penalties. No penalties. No, no more one or two penalties. penalties. And that's against, and that's a, against bad a bad Washington, Washington football, football team. team. That's, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the final point they say, they say it's, it's, uh, uh, because, because Dallas coughs up the ball, so they don't win the turnover battle, and uh, Cowboys are going to be in trouble. You know, that's a great point, Nate. That tells you that the the state of this team right now is all week long. You talk about what the Cowboys have to do right, what they have to fix, what they have to overcome, what they can't do, and you're 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 playing a bad football team. You, should, you shouldn't be talking about you have to do this right and you have to fix this and you have to do this right. You, you should just be able to go in there and win this game. And, and you shouldn't be having to fix things. You shouldn't have to get better at things. You should be better than this team. And that I think that tells you the state of where this team is at. You're going in and playing a, a one-win football team and you're talking about all these things have to go right for you to win. That's just that's just sad right now This th- at this point in the season that – you're talking about this team, everything having to go right to beat a one-win football team. Yep. I just it's looked up to be man. <laughs> uh, I've been on one. I've been on one in fifteen teams. I've been on three and thirteen in the NFL. And when you walk in the locker room, if you are that alpha male that Jesse would talk about a lot, and you'll hear me talk about a lot, if you are truly that alpha male. You going in there, number one thing about how can I get better? How can I be desirable to this coaching staff and to, to, to another 31 teams? Because you have to look at it that way because it come, it's going to come a point, and if they don't turn it around and go on that run that you guys talked about, each and every guy, except maybe four guys on that team, will be and should be up for the auction block. And if they're not, then that means that you just had a bad year, and they want to, and they and they just saying the injuries got them. But every other year the injuries get us. Every other year it's the same guys. So if they don't turn this around, it's gonna come a point where each and each and every guy gonna have to say, God, Lee, man, what can I do to make myself better? within this team concept so that I'll be desirable to 31 other teams. It's going to come a point now for each and every one of these guys. All right, let's do it. Right, let's, let's do it. Let's 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 yeah, when it comes to about like, like games, right, it's it's the fight that, have, that they have in the game. This team, when they get into these games and a turnover happens or a bad thing happens, the good team, the teams who have winning records and a team who have a good locker room and a good culture, they find ways to overcome that. More so than not, this team looks around and goes, here we go again, and you just see it, the, the, the fall just continues to happen. No one puts a stop to it. So it's going to be interesting, to say the least, to see how this team comes out and perform uh, in Washington this weekend. All right, let's get after it then. Let's figure out, let's talk about what we think is going to happen. You know what? I don't know if there's enough right now, enough players to play nice, not nice. Like I actually thought about, hey, <laughs> let's all go around and pick one player that we think has been nice. And I, I don't know if, based off of last week's performance, if there's four guys that we could go through. Nate, you got one? You got one? Yes, sir. Coach Philbin, <laughs> offensive line coach. Nice job, brother. You okay. continue to right. put okay. this offensive right. line together and be respectable. Nice guy, nice job. So his players, okay. him and his players, I'm saying nice, nice job. Okay. Jesse, do you have one you could point out? Kurt, okay, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I guess I would have said Michael Gallup, but he dropped that dropped pass the in the end zone last week. So uh, overall, though, I think he's having a pretty good year. Yeah, I think the only guy that I could. <laughs> it wasn't right on the money, but it was catchable. I, I think the he's, only, he's think been the catching only... so many great passes to now that we expect that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. that was, that one was one he should have come. What you dancing, Kurt? That was that one was he, he should have come. You know it. I think I think <laughs> I think C D Lamb's probably my my one guy that I can I can say nice. I think he's lived up to expectations. Yeah. 
and his 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 arrow is pointing straight up like he is he he has the potential i think to be a number one on this team in the in the next year or two jesse anything? i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the, i'm gonna go with the uh I'm gonna go with the Russians that hacked Nate yesterday. Nice. <laughs> the Russians that got Nate. Nice. Stay out of his bank account, but hack his computer. Nice. All right, Jesse, what's your prediction for Sunday? <laughs> oh man, um, I told you guys last week. If the Cowboys didn't win, I can no longer see myself picking the Cowboys to win this season until they actually win. Then I can pick them again. So to be true to what I say and to be a man of my word. And I honestly do truly believe this. I think that the, that that Washington's defense is going to be dominant. Uh, to say a quote that Jerry Jones said from the great Nate Newton, he said about 30 years ago that they were going up there to deliver some capital punishment. Well, I think capital punishment will be waiting for the Cowboys when they get there from this Washington defense. So I'm going, I'm going 24, 24, 14. The football team of the Washington, mm, Kurt. DC area. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Washington's actually favored in this game, and I'm the same way. We're just not seeing. It. I think their strength of defense is better than our strength of offense, and their weakness of offense is probably better than our weakness of defense. So, um, as much as it pains me, um, I think it'd be low scoring there on ugly 14-13 Washington. Are, are we going to crack Nate? Is this going to be the first week that he doesn't pick the Cowboys? Hope springs eternal. And I promise you that Coach Fieldman will have this offensive line good enough to survive. If they can get the ball out of uh, Red Rifle's hand in time and Zeke can keep from fumbling, the Cowboys will have zero turnovers and they will get one turnover due to a, a batted ball by Randy Gregory to win this game. I like where your head's like at. Your head I, at. I, I think this is going to be a hope. Any, any more hope? hope, you, what else? hope you hope that he's going to turn water into wine on Sunday? <laughs> and Gator, all of a sudden, the sea is going to magically part again. Will Jesus, will Jesus rise on the third day this Sunday? What Any more hope you got for this game, Nick? You got any more hope? You got any more? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be... An ugly, ugly football game. I think it's going to be low scoring. I'm going to go 17 10. Washington, prove me. I'm like, Jesse, prove me wrong. You got to show me something. I haven't seen anything all year. Chris Bean, what's your prediction for the game before we get out of here? Cowboys by one. Eat lunch. Good all right, fellas. Cowboys what? by one. Cowboys by one. You heard it here, Chris Beam. All right, fellas. Nate, good seeing you again, man. Good to have you back. Jesse, hope on, brother. Hope on. Kurt, looking good in that navy blue polo. Chris Beam, thanks for keeping us on the air. We'll be back. Hopefully, Victory Monday. Hopefully, we all wrong. Hopefully, we're wrong. We have first place Cowboys on Monday. This guy's falling again. (laughs) Daniel Jones. We will be back Monday, same time, same place. Hanging with the boys. Peace. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!